Okay, uh, my name is Oliver Holle, uh, I'm the CEO of The Merger. The Merger is actually a small investment and in M&A boutique um, that on the one hand works on the traditional M&A sector, but on the other hand, that's the area that's more interesting here, uh, invests time and money in startups, early stage startups in the internet and mobile space. Uh, uh, I personally uh, made my money uh, in the mobile space. We had a company called Three United that came out of a merger of three small startups in Austria, and we sold that company in 2006 um, for 55 million uh, to Verisign in the US. I then worked a couple of years in, in, in the US and then moved back to Austria to start the merger. Um, and we have a non typical investment model. We invest primarily work uh, and resources uh, and then help in the second step on the financing side. Uh, and one of our best projects is soup.me. Uh, and that's uh, Christopher. My name is Christopher Clay. Um, I have a background in information design, self-taught programmer, and about two years ago I started something that at that point was called soup.io. Um, it's a Right now it's a simple multimedia blog, but we're in a big relaunch right now and by the beginning of next month it's going to be soup.me. How did we meet actually? I, you guys we, contacted us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So why? Because we, we saw soup.io and really liked it. It was cool. It was, it's, not hard, not, it's very hard to find companies or projects uh, that have, a, that have the international edge. Um, yes, we had, so we previously had some other Austrian angel investors. Um, and I mean, the business model was unclear. We were not monetizing the platform. We had a, at that point, I don't know, 15,000 um, active users and about 50,000 signed up users, um, driving maybe half a million unique visitors a month. So it was you know, not tiny, um, but we did not monetize. We had small experiments with advertising, but it wasn't profitable, certainly. Um, that's also one of the reasons we're doing the relaunch, because it now has a much clearer business model. Um, another important aspect is the Silicon Valley connection. Um, we spent last fall in Silicon Valley, um, coordinated um, by the merger guys, mm -hmm. He has a house there, <laughs> and um, <It> helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they introduced us to some business angels. We had some introductions to some other angels uh, on our own, but it helped us. Like, um, do you want to explain about the Silicon Valley beachhead strategy? Yeah, so quite a few companies in Austria, uh, but Soup is definitely one of them. Actually, should be in the valley. They shouldn't be here. They should be with their B two C focused business model and their. Um, ambition, uh, they should really actually launch in the US and of course that, that is not that easy for an Austrian company or a company in, in our region. So what we offer is actually a bridge to do that without money. So we have a house there where people can live, we have a, one of our um, partners is working out of the Silicon Valley and, and can help with meetings with uh, any kind of logistical setup. Uh, and simply helping uh, in making this, this feasible. Um, and what we are doing, and that was last fall, together with Soup, we basically, uh, they spent a couple of weeks there, actually, how long was it? it was uh, a little over two months. A little over two months, quite a long time. Uh, in really doing some first explorations, how, how, how realistic is it that we find investors in the valley? How realistic is it that we can actually launch there? Um, and and then, based on that, define a funding strategy and execution strategy, and at the end of the day, a point when really to move over. We did we did not invest direct money. Yeah, we, we basically provided all this infrastructure and and the work. For that, we got a small equity, uh, and we are now. Um, 
putting together an investment round where we also will invest with our own money uh, uh, in the next two months and that will be then the basis to really have hopefully if, if everything goes to plan be, be ready to get the company up and running in the US. We, we did not have regular reports so far. Um, it was based on, on need whenever we, we had uh, pressing issues. But just today, uh, we moved into the same building, the company, um, to establish a closer um, connection and have more regular you know, weekly meetings and, and get more direct feedback. Not really. Uh, we, so what we are doing, based on the last couple of years, where we did this model where it's basically we basically work for equity model. We 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 are now raising our small uh, a small business angel fund, uh, 10, min, ten million euros in size, uh, and that will be the so to say the vehicle to then do a, a follow on round with Soup. Uh, and there, if we find so, we don't need necessarily the other investors for that. We do that ourselves. Um, if we can find a very good US business angel that has this specific value add, then of course we would love to do that. So that's the, that's the strategy, to have this fund that they're raising as our, as our basic um, funding and with that in our hands go to, the, go to Silicon Valley and say, we don't need the money right now, but we think we should be in Silicon Valley and we would like to establish um, relations there. And um, we think that's a good way to raise money because you should raise money when you don't need it and not when you're desperate. There's more of them. That's the first thing. <laughs> many, <laughs> many, many, many more. <laughs> more of them, savvier. I mean, there really aren't a lot of angels in Austria that have any experience in mobile or in, in internet. There, there are people that have the money and that have some entrepreneurial background often or most of the times coming from outside of this industry and I personally believe that's valuable but that's it's a huge difference whether you have an investor that made his money in the internet mobile space. So let me answer that from a, from a product standpoint briefly. Um, so the most important thing is not spending too much time on the, on the pure idea and the business plan where this pure idea is, is sketched out in your mind, but spending lots of time building an actual prototype, getting it into the hands of people, getting some traction, getting some feedback, because your idea will change. It's not perfect, even if you think it is. Um, and so the faster you can get to real users who like your product and give you feedback or hate your product and give you feedback, the better. And I would not go to investor, an investor with just the idea or just the business plan. That's just not enough in these days. Especially web startups are getting cheaper and cheaper to fund. You can get the prototype up and running in a few weeks, like working weekends. There's no excuse to not have anything real to show. So we, we for example, don't look at business plans. It's not interesting. And when we were in Silicon Valley, nobody asked us for a business plan. Yeah. They ask for a pitch deck, you know, 10 slides, the basics, who, what's the market, who's the team, etc. Um, maybe an executive summary of a business plan, one or two pages, but nobody asks for a full business plan. Nobody's going to read that. They don't have the time. Do it. Do it. Don't, don't. Um, there's so much to read out there on the web about how all this works. Read up on Lean Startup. Read the blogs of, of influential angel investors in the States. It's all out there, you should just go and do it. And don't give up, that's the other important thing. Don't give up if it doesn't work immediately. Yeah, and look outside of your, yes. your comfort zone. <laughs> yes. that's, that's, that's don't launch thing. a website in Slovakian only. Yeah. Or in Austria, just benchmark yourself with the best. It's not that difficult. I mean, the, the US startups are also bootstrapped and yeah. they're also just guys. There's no reason why you can't beat them.